Hello everybody. Uh, so in this uh, video we are going to solve one example on the or the first example on combustion reactors. And in this example we have ethane as a fuel and it's being burned with 50% excess air. Um, we know that the conversion of ethane is 90% so it means that 10% of ethane is not uh, burned in the reactor. Um, and we are told that of the re the ethane burned, and this is this is important <coughs> to notice that it it's it's part of the the what's going to be uh, coming next is uh, related to the the ethane burned the ninety percent not all the ethane uh, twenty five percent reacts to form carbon monoxide and the balance reacts to form carbon dioxide and we want to calculate the molar composition of the stack gas on dry bases and the mole ratios of water to dry stack gas stack gas is the 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 effluent gas the product gas from the um, from the combustion so um uh, it's again we, we we mentioned before that combustion uh, is a special uh, it's not a special, but one one of the of the most famous uh, reactive systems. Okay, the combustion reactors, and uh, we deal with it the same way we deal with any reactive system. It just depends on how we um, we 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 uh, put the information that we have. So there are some information that are 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 uh, not given here, and we can find them ourselves. So for example, the the balance equations, the the chemical reactions. Um, some uh, information related to the air. These are all things that we can uh, we can figure out ourselves. So uh, we will we will follow the same procedure that we used to follow before for any reactive system. So we will start with uh, the um, uh, block diagram or the, the, the putting the information on a diagram. So in this diagram we have two feed streams. One of them is the fuel, which is ethane, and the other is air. Uh, which consists of oxygen nitrogen and the products will be uh, different things so uh, the conversion is 90 percent it means that some of the ethane is coming out in the product and we have carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so it means that we have two reactions complete and incomplete and we will have some excess oxygen and nitrogen coming in the product so this is why we have these six components in the product stream um, and then we uh, can list the reactions that we have. So the reactions are very easy. Ethane is known to be C2H6. Um, and for ethane, we, the complete combustion is a reaction of ethane with oxygen producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. Uh, it's two carbons, so we'll have two carbon dioxide. Six hydrogens, so we'll have three water. And then uh, going back, we will have uh, four plus three is seven. So we have seven over two O2. For the uh, incomplete combustion it's going to be the same but instead of co2 it's co and then we'll have five over two oxygen um, so this is the first thing the second is the additional relation so we have uh, first the um, percentage percentage excess air which is 50 percent um, this is one thing one information the second is so the second is is it, it can be put as an additional relation or as a given variable, which is the composition of air. So either you consider it as an additional relation, which is the ratio of oxygen to nitrogen, or consider this as a composition of stream two, which is 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Either way, if you, when you do degrees of freedom, it's not going to dip, to make a, a big difference uh, because uh, it's it's uh, an information that is subtracted either uh, in the uh, given variables or in the additional relation so it's it's not going to make a difference we have also the conversion uh, which is the third relation and we have one more information here which is of the ethane burn 25 reacts to form carbon monoxide i'll keep it as it is for now and when we uh, reach the point when uh, or where we want to use this information we will see how to uh, convert this into um, into an equation so uh, the degrees of freedom uh, is uh, we can calculate the degrees of freedom we have uh, I'll solve it first using the extent of reaction method and then using the atomic balance method so for the extent of reaction method we have uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine so we have nine variables and we have two extents of reaction so it's nine plus two uh, we have no given variables and we have um, one, two, three, four, five. We have six balance equations and four additional relations. So the degrees of freedom is one. And uh, of course, it has to be not zero um, because we have no given flow rates. So we have to assume a flow rate anyway. So this is 
what will make the degrees of freedom is zero and the easiest um, um, value or, or the easiest uh, assumption is to assume flow rate of stream number one so now when we uh, go to the uh, the solution we can uh, we have different things but it, it's kind of rule of thumb in case of combustion reactions or combustion um, reactors uh, is that the first thing you need to do is to know how much air is is being fed to the reactor so we will use the first two relations in the beginning to calculate the number of moles of oxygen and the number of moles of nitrogen in stream number two. So um, if we, if we uh, use the, the first relation for the excess air, it is 50% of the theoretical amount, so we need to calculate the theoretical amount. And remember that the theoretical amount is uh, calculated assuming that all the fuel is consumed in complete combustion reaction in complete combustion reaction. So um, if you have 100 moles uh, or 1,000 moles, as we assumed here, of ethane, theoretically, they require only uh, 3.5 times. Um, so it's going to be 3,500 uh, moles. Um, and this is not the actual amount. This is the theoretical amount. So the actual amount is 50% more. So it is this number multiplied by 1.5, which would be 5250 moles which is number of moles of oxygen in stream 2 and from the second additional relation we can calculate the number of moles of nitrogen which is the oxygen times 79 over 21 um, and now we can write the balance equation so what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to write the balance equations and then um, use the additional relation so now we, we used only two additional relations we have still two more additional relations and uh, six balance equations. So I, I'm going to write the balance equations and we're not going to solve them without the additional relations but th this is a reason why I am, I am uh, writing the equations because there is a point I want to make clear. I, I made it clear before but I want to make sure that I, I made it clear um, here uh, as well. So uh, all the balance equations would be a function of the extents of reactions and this is what we mentioned before. So for let's say for ethane, the ethane in the product is the ethane in the feed minus xi1 minus xi2. Uh, we know ethane1 is 1000 so it's 1000 minus xi1 and xi2. The um, oxygen is the oxygen in the feed minus 7 over 2 xi1 minus 5 over 2 xi2 for nitrogen it's the same nitrogen is the only inert here so it's not part of the of the reaction so n equals out um, for carbon monoxide it's it's zero plus xi2 for uh, plus two i'm sorry plus two xi2 for carbon dioxide is two xi1 and for water it's three xi1 plus three xi2 so what you'll notice here that all of them all of them <coughs> are functions of the two extents of reactions and if you uh, want to solve or, or find the flow rates of, of these uh, of these components, then you have to you have to calculate the values of xi1 and xi2. And the 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 tool that we have to calculate xi1 and xi2 are the additional relations. So this is why um, we are going to use the additional relation. So the first additional relation is the conversion of ethane, which is a relation between ethane in one and ethane in three. So it's it's even very 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 simple it's, it, it even doesn't require writing the equation so if if you know that thousand moles are going into a reactor and 90 percent of them are consumed then the the the, the unconsumed amount is 10 percent which is 100 moles so we know that the number of moles of ethane in the product is 100 moles i just put the uh, summary of all the the uh, mass balance uh, equations here and then from additional relation three we can know the ethane in the product is 100 moles but still um, this ethane is not going to solve the problem because we have two variables in this equation. So the uh, the only option that we have is to use the last additional relation, which is that 25 of ethane burned reacts to form carbon monoxide. So I know that all ethane burned is 900 moles, and 25% of them are going into the second reaction. So 25% of 900 is 225 moles. And from the equation balance, I know that if, if I, I have 225 moles fed, then I will have 450 moles as a product. So I can use this relation to calculate the number of moles of carbon monoxide in stream 3. Okay, And from this, we can calculate xi2, which is 225 moles. Now, using the, this, uh, the, the number of moles of ethane in stream 3, xi2, we can use them to calculate xi1. And from xi1 and xi2, 
we can calculate everything else. We can calculate the number of moles of oxygen, the number of moles of carbon dioxide, and the number of moles of water vapor. So it's 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 done. And once you know the extent of reaction, everything is is easy. Now let's uh, move to the, uh, the the solution using the atomic balance uh, method, which is going to be the same thing, but I'm going to just show the differences. So um, in the in the uh, atomic balance, I'm I'm already assuming that we know the bases, which is 1,000 moles. So I know this number, um, and um, we are going to start with the same thing with the degrees of freedom analysis. With the degrees of freedom analysis, now with the number of variables is um, equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's 9. Uh, we know one uh, given variable. We have um, the number of equations is equal to the number of elements. So I have carbon, uh, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, just this. So we have four equations and the number of additional relations are four. The same additional relations that we um, that we had before. So if we put everything together, it's it's nine minus one minus four minus four, which is zero, which is the same that we got from the previous problem. Now, when we uh, uh, solve the problem, we I, I'm going here to start with the four additional relations. So I'm, I'm repeating the same thing. This is the theoretical oxygen. This is the number of moles of oxygen in stream two. This is the number of moles of nitrogen from additional relation three. We can get the number of moles of ethene uh, in stream three. And from additional relation four, we can find the number of moles of carbon monoxide in stream three. So this is this is uh, independent on the method. And this is one thing you need to, to know that the additional relations are independent on the method. It doesn't matter if you use this method or the other method. Uh, additional relations are additional relations. So um, it's, it's going to be a common thing in, in all methods. Now, uh, with all the information that we got, I put, I put them already on the, on the diagram. And then now we can, um, uh, we can write the balance equations. We have four variables and we have four balance equations. Right. So in this case, we have to, um, to write the equation. So one of them is very straightforward, which is nitrogen. So nitrogen in equals nitrogen out, which is going to be an easy, uh, easy number uh, to get. Uh, so we're not doing any any like uh, complicated calculations here. Now for the um, the the three the rest uh, the three three uh, other um, variables or unknown variables, we have oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water, and we have three equations for oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. So um, we, we need to, to think of which of them is, go, is going to be uh, providing a result easily um, instead of doing uh, or, or solving two equations and two unknowns or, or anything like this, we can directly get the, the answer. So if you, if you look for, let's say, oxygen, we have oxygen here in the feed, so I know the amount of oxygen here, but oxygen is available in O2. Um, CO, CO2, and water. So there are three unknown variables that contain oxygen. So I, not can, I cannot use the oxygen equation to calculate uh, anything directly. So for carbon, we have carbon in ethane. We have carbon in ethane here. We have carbon in CO and CO2. So the only unknown here is the number of moles of carbon dioxide. For hydrogen, it's also available here only, and it's available in ethane and in water, so it's only uh, one unknown. So we can either start with hydrogen or with carbon, and after calculating the number of moles of water and the number of moles of carbon dioxide, we can use the oxygen equation to calculate the number of moles of water. So this is the plan that we should follow. So for hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen in the feed is 6 times 1,000. The product is 6 times 100 plus 2 times the number of moles of water. So you can find the number of moles of water to be 2,700 moles. For carbon, we have carbon here only. So it's 2 times 1,000. Here we have 2 times 100 uh, plus 450 times 1 plus the number of moles of carbon dioxide times 1. And from this, we can calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide. And for uh, oxygen, we have oxygen here. It's 5,250 times 2. And we have in the product a number of moles of oxygen that I don't know times 2 plus 450 times 1 plus um, uh, 1,350, which is carbon dioxide, times 2 plus water, which is 2,500, 700 times 1. 
so this equation has only one unknown which is the number of moles of oxygen which we can calculate and these results are exactly the same results that we got from the extent of reaction method so finally we can summarize everything as we see here this is the uh, feed as number of moles and mole fractions the product on weight basis and on dry basis for number of moles and mole fraction the last uh, requirement was to find the uh, the ratio of the uh, number of moles of water to the number of moles of the rest of the stack gases so it is 2700 which is this divided by the sum of all of the components on dry basis which is to, th to 23000 and 975 which is going to be 0.113 so this is the uh, first problem we have one more problem to solve next time inshallah so i'll see you then